Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of these little guys, the Kaweco Lilliput Fountain Pen. So this is a really, really interesting pen, um, mostly because of its size. These guys are absolutely tiny. It's a little fountain pen that goes into like a little almost pill-like capsule like this, and uh, absolutely disappears. So in terms of the size, let's let's do a comparison here. Here it is next to your Hinderer Investigator pen, uh, which is not a fountain pen, obviously. Here it is next to your Parker Jada, your Prometheus Alpha pen. Uh, this is a Max Madco bolt action sort of pen. Got a review of that guy coming up here soon. And here's your just generic boring big pen sort of affair. Um, so this is a very, very small little pen. And actually when it's fully deployed, ah, come on you little bugger. There we go. When it's fully deployed, it's about the same length as your generic pens, just uh, a little bit more fountainy. So uh, I want to put out first the thanks to my buddy uh, Ian, not Tech and Tools Ian, but another one for uh, putting me onto this. He basically said, "Hey, hey, Nick, I tell you what, if you buy a lily put and you don't like it, I'll buy it off of you." That bastard. Because I got it, I got the copper one for him, thinking, okay, you know, I'm probably gonna be sent, and I fell in love. And like within two weeks of owning this guy, I was like, holy crap, I gotta get one in steel, because I'm a steel guy. But anyway, so thanks, Ian, for dooming my freaking wallet. I, I appreciate that, jerk. So uh, let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this particular fountain pen. Okay, so on the good side, um, first and foremost, this addresses one of my chief concerns with an ADC fountain pen, which is that I don't necessarily use the pen every day. Uh, and so a pen that dries out regularly is kind of a problem. Uh, this little guy has been largely in a drawer for a little while, but yet when I put it to paper, it writes like a charm, no problem whatsoever. Um, that's, that's a beautiful thing. This is a pen that doesn't tend to dry out. And part of that's because with the cap on here, it makes a nice sealed system. But uh, yeah, so that's a beautiful thing to start with in an everyday carry sort of fountain pen. Uh, second thing to keep in mind is that this guy is using a very boring standard international cartridge. Um, it uses one of these little guys. They're available from all sorts of different manufacturers with all sorts of different colors. Uh, and so, you know, you're not limited in the same way that, you know, Pilot makes you buy Pilot cartridges, etc. This is pretty much universally available, which is a beautiful thing. Um, so that's nice. This is a pen that is really nifty in a lot of ways, and you almost, you get a lot of strange looks off of this guy. If you just pull out of your pocket a little tiny capsule-shaped object, then turn it around, and suddenly you have a fountain pen in your hands, that's really weird. Um, in the modern society, people don't expect people to carry pens, let alone to carry a small fountain pen. So, yeah. Uh, that's kind of a fun little thing there. Um, it's sort of that same bit of oddity that you get if you carry like a $2 bill in the U.S. It's just the, uh, what the heck is this guy about? And I enjoy that personally. I might as well be weird for reasons I can control, you know? Uh, so that's nice. This is also a very, very nice writing pen for me. I am a big, big fan of this pen as a writing tool because the flow is very smooth and it's smooth on all angles. Um, there, I've heard some things about people having trouble with uh, Koiko nibs, and they do tend to, there's a little bit of variability in there. But for me, at least, this is a very nice writer. Is it perfect? No, not really. But it's also 100 bucks, and it's also deeply durable. So for me, this is absolutely a wonderful thing. Um, in terms of the great, there is just one incredible fact about this, and that is the size and the durability for the pocket. And that is what makes this such a damn good pen. When you put this in your pocket, it just kind of disappears. For the last maybe three weeks, it's been really hard to kick this out of my pocket. I just throw it in the same pocket as my keys and my chapstick and whatnot, and it just rattles around in the bottom there. If I need a pen, I reach down in there and I grab the pen and I take it out. But it just clanks around in there with everything else. And because it's pretty much just solid metal, I mean, the only components to this is one chunk of milled metal, a second chunk of milled metal with a nib in there, a third chunk of milled metal, and a converter, there's really not that much to damage. Uh, and everything is, well, metal. So that's very, very nice. This is deeply durable, and it's very easy to carry. Um, just shaking this around, running or you know, doing my normal thing. This has been completely undamaged, completely uninjured, and writes just like a charm every damn time. So I'm absolutely blown away with this. This is the easiest carry 
I, I own in terms of pens. I mean, the Hinderer Investigator is a very small pen, uh, but it, you know, it, it's a little heavier, it's a little bit bigger, and it's got the clip effect. This guy, you can really just toss into the pocket and not even worry about it, not even think twice. And so it's, this is really compelling in that way. Um, you don't need a shirt with a, a deep pocket or anything like that. You don't. You just throw it in your pocket and you're good to go. It's not going to accidentally deploy. It's not going to accidentally click. It's just, it's good to go. So that is the great of this particular pen. It's got this beautiful size and durability, which makes it just so carryable that it's, I'm in love with that. And uh, so, yeah, this is a just beautiful pen overall. Let's talk about the couple of little bad things you got going on here. Okay, so on the bad side, first off, fountain pens do have some disadvantages for everyday carry. Um, namely, that fountain pens are not great on carbon paper or anything where pressure sensitivity is a thing. One of those electronic signature capture displays. Either way, um, because the, the joy of a fountain pen is that you just put it on the paper and it writes, um, no pressure is required, they're not really good for pressure. So that's something you got to keep in mind. If you use a lot of carbon paper or you write in a lot of weird situations like upside down or otherwise, you probably want something with an actual ball in the tip. So a roller ball or a space pen or something like that. So there you go. The other disadvantage a fountain pen has is that it can be a little trickier on air travel. Um, it's not a big, as big a deal as a lot of people make out of it. And especially on this guy where the cap screws on very strongly. I'm not concerned about this leaking in my suitcase particularly, but it's always a good idea to fly with the pen up. And if you're really concerned, you just take out the cartridge before you leave and then you swap in a new one when you land and there's no question whatsoever. So that is something you should keep in mind there. Um, a little practical issue is that these guys roll. They're very, very happy to roll and keep rolling because they don't have a clip to stop them. And so if you walk on a lot of slanted surfaces, I guess that's something to keep in mind. These are small pens, um, you know, just for size. Like I said, this is about the size of your big pen. And so it's if you really need a bigger pen for your bigger hands, this is not going to be your best choice. Uh, also, it's really not very easy for me to use without the cap posted. I mean, you can do it, and it works okay, but it's just not ideal. Um, and posting the cap can sometimes take a little bit of time. Uh, you know, especially given that there's this circular surface here on the back end, it's easy to cross thread or misthread or something. I'm getting much better at it, but it's a little bit fiddly to post the cap, and you really do need to in order to write for this uh, with this for any length of time. Compared to a pen where you just pop the cap out, or even better, like that, you're not going to be as ready to write as quickly there. Um, an issue that may be an issue for some is that, there, like I said, this takes cartridges, but there's no converter available. So if you need to use your own ink for whatever reason, you're going to be refilling one of these guys. It's doable, but it's not ideal. Um, and then finally, uh, well, not quite finally, this guy, the steel version, actually came a little bit dry, meaning that it didn't feed the ink as much and as volume as I'd like, as much volume, that is. And so I actually ended up adjusting the uh, the ink flow a little bit. I got a video in my other people's videos playlist over to the side there talking about how to do that. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. And then finally, honestly, the thing I like least about this pen is that it is a little bit slow to deploy from the pocket. You pull it out of your pocket, first you have to unscrew it, then you have to flip it around, and then you have to cap, you know, post the cap. It's not slow by any stretch of the imagination, but compared to something like your Parker Jada, where you just pull it out of your pocket and click, and you're writing, it just you know, it's not as satisfying. And so I have often found myself when I'm carrying this guy using for a, just a quick little jot, like at the bank or the signature at the restaurant, using their pen rather than this one because it's just honestly quicker. But that's really the worst thing this is going for it. So to wrap up the bad here, the fountain pens do have some disadvantages for EDC um, in that they're carbon paper and travel's a little trickier. Um, they do tend to roll, these guys specifically. They're small. Um, you really need to post the cap, and that takes a little bit of time. And there is no cartridge converter available. And, you know, yours may come a little bit dry. I've heard of that with the Coecos earlier. You might have to tweak that to your taste. On the ugly side, actually, there's really nothing ugly here. I'm a really big fan of this pen. There's a lot of joy here, and at least for me, it, there's no no questions. So let's jump into the final verdict here. Okay, final verdict here is that I 
they, I love these pens. They, this is a solid 100% gem that I recommend very, very highly. And the reason for that is a fountain pen is usually a diva. It's made for the suit pocket, not the cargo pocket. See, they're not necessarily going to be robust. They're not going to be able to be bounced around and jolted and whatnot as easily. Often they're made out of fragile materials, and sometimes they require weird filling procedures. So, you know, you need to be at home with an ink bottle and an eyedropper or something like that. Um, that's, that's not necessarily ideal. Um, they are often tend to dry out if you don't use them, if the cap seal isn't great. Or like on the Pilot Vanishing Point, if you just don't use it for a little while, it tends to dry out. And they tend to be larger in the pocket, and they tend to be pretty fancy looking. And so, you know, generally, fountain pens are not the best choice for EDC, but these right here, the, the Coeco Lilliput is kind of the exception to that rule. Because it is durable. When you put it in its natural form inside the pocket here, this, you're not going to hurt this pen at all. It's, it's durable. It's small and it's pocketable. You can just toss this in your pocket. It takes an easy to carry and easy to replace cartridge. Any place that sells ink cartridges is going to sell one of these guys. No problem. And at the same time, though, it is still absolutely excellent to do writing with. I, I have no problem picturing sitting through a long meeting of writing stuff down using this guy. This is not a concern for me in the least. And almost most importantly, this is 100% full of panache because you're getting something very industrial that's got a very beautiful fountain pen nib on the end, and so people look at you very strangely carrying this guy. So this is a non-diva fountain pen that is just stellar for EDC. And so I, this, like I said, it's so good that after a few days of owning it, I bought another one for myself so I could still sell this guy back to my buddy Ian. And so this is my favorite fountain pen by far. And honestly, since I got this guy, everything else, and I've got some wonderful options on pens, have been coming in second place in terms of pocket time. It's really hard to push this guy out of my pocket. So the Coeco Lilliput fountain pen is absolutely 100% solidly a gem. I really like this pen a lot, and if you're even curious about going fountain pen, check it out. Uh, for a hundred bucks, I think it's absolutely okay. So, hope this has been interesting, and uh, have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day.